Let's just see if I can make it through this intro. I have recorded this intro about eight times. It's a rough day, y'all. <laughs> to episode three of the Flax Golden Knits podcast, a knitting podcast. My name is Kristen and I live in Nashville, Tennessee with my husband and our two kitty cats. You can find me on Ravelry as, and Instagram as Flax Golden Knits. And I would like to say hi to my subscribers and um, welcome back to any returning viewers as well as welcome to any first time viewers. That is really awkward to say. For some reason it just blows my mind that I have su subscribers and that anyone would watch my podcast. Um, anyway, but hi, I'm so appreciative and so happy that you decided to spend a little time with me today. Um, so I don't have a lot of knitting to share today. One of these days I will have some finished objects and some knitting <laughs> of consequence to share with you, but this was not the week for that. Um, last week I talked about being sick and how I've been sick for a month. And this week I had to pay for all of that time that I spent being sick by catching up at work. So I did a lot of... Um, a lot of overtime this week, staying late at work and trying to get caught up on some deadlines that were, you know, really had to be done and um, trying to get caught up on some other things that just to make my life a little bit easier. And yeah, so by the time I got home each night, I was just so tired. And then also it was just one of those weeks where all of my technology decided to quit. So printers weren't working and computers weren't working and um, cameras were <laughs> acting up and it was just a real special week for technology. So, um, so yeah, here I am. I will show you the works in progress that I have been showing you for a couple of weeks and um, we'll just chit chat about some other things. So first, let's just talk about my works in progress. I'll catch you up on those. Um, so my first work in progress this week um, that I'm going to show you are my Vanilla Valentine socks. Again, I'm making them out of Lane Servinia Forever colorway 67, and it, they're just so Valentine'sy. I still just absolutely love these socks. I'll turn them around so you can see where my stitch marker was, or my progress keeper was last week. Or that's where I that's where I stopped last week, and so I've gotten a fair amount done. Um, still not as much as I would have would have liked. I got a little bit bored with these this week for some reason, and just kind of put them down and didn't pick them up for a couple of days. So I am now at the heel turn. Um, I'm ready to turn the heel on both of these. I'm doing a fish lips kiss heel, and. I will show you what has happened. So I don't, I don't need for my socks to be matchy matchy, but I do like for them to not have weird, um, weird things happen in the heel gusset area with the colors. Um, and so I decided to do this trick where you pull from the center of the ball. Um, so I've been pulling from the outside to knit the socks. And then I decided to pull from the center to knit the heels so that they're, I would be able to pick up with, with the color that I've been knitting with. And there wouldn't be like a weird color change in the, on the top of the foot, on the instep. But when I pulled from the center on one of them, I got yarn barf. So when we finish here, I'm going to go sort all of this out. 
kind of a tangled mess right now. But those are coming along. Um, there's not much else to say about them. <laughs> uh, I did share my vanilla sock recipe last week, and um, but what I didn't say is that I am knitting these on um, US size zeros at a 64 stitch count. So I usually knit my socks on US size ones on 2.25 millimeter, and um, this yarn is just a little bit thinner than the yarns that I have been using, so I wanted to drop down to a zero and just see how that went. Um, so yeah, that's what's happening. I do want to say, this is a thing that I had to figure out the hard way. If you go to a yarn store in America and ask for a US size 1, you might get a 2.5 millimeter and you might get a 2.25 millimeter. I prefer a 2.25 millimeter um, and that's just something to be aware of. Nobody, nobody quite knows what a US size 1 is. <laughs> Um, so there, just, just something to be aware of. <laughs> Probably something that everybody but me was aware of before now. Um, my second work in progress that I want to show you is the, um, Sockhead Slouch Hat by Kelly McClure. This is a free pattern on Ravelry, and I am using a Cascade Heritage sock yarn and a pack of peds in Kaleidosock, in the Kaleidosock colorway to knit this hat. I think usually the charm um, of the sock head slouch hat is that you're using one hat and you're, or one color and you're just knitting in the round and it's really easy that way, but I like to complicate simple things. So I am knitting uh, with these two colors and striping them. And I decided to do just a, a one by one stripe and I am loving how this is coming out. This was my podcast editing knitting this week. So um, it's just very easy. It's I have it on uh, size 16 or um, 16 inch cirques right now so I can just knit around and around and doing the one by one does make it a little bit easier to keep up with I just I change yarns every single round and I know that and so I don't have to count rows at all I just I just knit and it's really easy and it's really fun and I really just love how it's coming out so you can see I was talking last week about how I heard that the um, pack of heads, at least in the Kaleidosock colorway, pulls in a funny way, and you can see how that would play out if you were knitting a pair of socks out of it. You can see how that pooling would just get kind of funky in there, but I really like how it's turning out, and I, um, turning out in the hat, and I like the way the one by one ribbing breaks it up just enough to make it a little bit more interesting. I'm really enjoying it. I really am. I am having a, a, a funky, funky thing with the, um, I don't know how to do a jogless stripe in a one by one stripe. Because usually you would, um, on the second round after a color change you would pick up that first stitch from the round before and knit it together and that's how you would um, okay so <laughs> I feel like I'm explaining that poorly if you don't know how to do jogless stripes just go ahead and watch a YouTube video right now of how to do jogless stripes <laughs> and um, you'll see what I mean if you do know, then you'll understand what I'm saying. Um, so I'm not great at jogless stripes anyway. I'm always forgetting to pick up the pick up the stitch on the next round, and it just, I, I'm just bad at it. Um, but I was trying to do a jogless stripe. I was trying to do a jogless stripe right here, and it just wasn't turning out so well, and it was causing this funky thing to happen. So I just stopped. 
up here I'm just going around and around I'm not worrying about making any trying to make anything jogless and I think that's actually turning out better so I'm just not gonna worry about that with a hat like this um, I think it's easy enough to just hide that seam in the back and just slouch it over and I'm just not gonna I'm just not caring too much to to be pers too persnickety about it so yeah that's my sock head slouch hat my third and final work in progress is the um, stay shaft stay shaft shawl the stay soft shawl by Vera Valamaki I had just started this shawl last week when I recorded and I have my marker right here somewhere it was just right here I had just gotten you know that little piece done it was a teeny tiny baby shawl and now it's um I don't know like at least a uh, an elementary sized shawl it's coming along I have started to stripe in the second colorway which let me show you the um, show you the cakes of yarn real quick I'm knitting out of two skeins of wool and boon one in the Robin Sparkles colorway which is this soft blue with um, lots of neon speckles and just all kinds of speckly speckles in there and uh, the second skein color two they're so soft it's the, it's their MCN base merino cashmere nylon and they're so so soft I love it um, but this is in the Buffy colorway and it's a soft peach with very similar speckles. They're slightly different, but there are still some pops of neon and pink and blue. And um, the thing about it is, if you can see right there, they're so similar. They're both so similarly subtle that they're, they're making a very nice fade. <laughs> But I'm not sure that this pattern was exactly meant to fade, so I think maybe I chose poorly. Sorry, I'm banging my needles on the tripod. So I don't know if you can see, but it is. I have started striping it in, so this is all Robin Sparkles. And you can see the peachy, buffy start to come in right there. And... I do like it a lot. I think it's really pretty. When I was looking, when I was choosing these yarns, there was a yarn that I think was also Woolen Boon um, that was a a less subtle peach color, and I almost wish that I had gotten that one. But you know, I'm just gonna run with this, and I think it's still gonna be really nice. And I'm still gonna really love it. Um, the only thing is, there is a third color. And this is in Old Rusted Chair Shipwreck colorway, and it's just an 80-20. Let's see, Old Rusted Chair uh, is a Nashville yarn, or it's a Nashville dyer, and which I'm excited to be using a dyer or a yarn that's dyed in Nashville. Um, it's an 80-20 Superwash Merino and nylon, and it's still very soft. Um, and I do love it. But now I'm wondering if I should just go with the very, the subtle nature of the other two and maybe go back to House of Yarn and find a third, very subtle yarn to do the third color in. I'll pop a picture of the Stay Soft shawl if you haven't seen it before, um, so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. There will be, along this bottom edge, there will be a third color that comes in. So, yeah, I'm not sure. It's coming along. I'm sticking with it. I think I'm just going to keep going with this, you know, with these and just let it kind of fade um, and see how that goes. I am very new to 
well, I'm completely new to speckles. I think this is one of the first projects I've done with a speckled yarn. And um, so I'm just new to the world of speckles and how you pick out the color, color ways to kind of go with each other. Because then there's the main color that you have to think about, or the main colors, and then there are the speckles that you think about. And getting all of that to, I mean, I've just seen some brilliant, brilliant projects made out of these speckled yarns, and I'm always just wondering how people chose the yarns, because... And especially like if you don't have a yarn store and you choose them online, how do you do that? This is something I'm still figuring out. So I'm just going to go with this. The, they are looking very good together. I'm just not sure that for the project, um, the way the project or the way the pattern was written, that I chose wisely the yarns, but. Um, yeah, I don't know. So I might go back this week and just look again at House of Yarn and see if there's a third um, a third skein that's going to maybe blend a little better. And if, if I don't find anything, I think the shipwreck will still be beautiful. And I might still go with that. I just... I don't know. I don't know. So those are my three works in progress right now. That's it. <laughs> That's all I've got. Um, but I do feel like I am at a place, I feel a little bit more caught up at work. I have gone an entire week now feeling pretty good, not feeling sick right now. So I think that I will this week finally have some time and some mental space to cast on a couple of more things. Those other imminent cast-ons that I talked about, the speckled space socks and the, um, a hat. One of Wooly Wormhead's hats that I talked about in my first episode. I will share them when, um, when I get them cast on, which will hopefully be this week, so I will share them on my next podcast. Um, yeah, I do think that I will get those cast on this week. Um, I have pardon my ums today. I'm a little tired and this podcast is a bit of a struggle <laughs> to be completely honest. Uh, but I wanted to stay on track and stay on schedule so I don't sort of mentally fall behind. Um, so just, you're going to have to just put up with my ums today. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I have a full-time job as a communications assistant at a nonprofit, and I am also a massage therapist. I don't do massage therapy all the time, but um, I used to, and now I just do filling in work on the weekends. And this pat this Saturday, yesterday, I'm recording on a Sunday, uh, yesterday I did a few massages, only three, but with the extra work that I did in my full-time job this week, those three just wore me out this weekend. So today I'm just a little fatigued, a little tired. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on. Such is life. So, now that we've talked about my wimpy weenie whips, I want to talk a little bit more about casting on a sweater. Last week I talked about wanting to cast on a sweater, and I wanted to get a pullover cast on. I've been kind of obsessed with this idea of knitting a pullover like a, a like a thicker chunkier pullover I don't know why but um, I had it narrowed down to the Daylin pullover and the Avalanche and um, I will put those in the show notes below because I cannot off the top of my head remember who the patterns are by 
I think the Avalanche is by Heidi Kiermeyer, maybe? Anyway, I'll put that, put that information in the show notes. Um, I did decide to go with the Avalanche, and so I got on the Quince & Co. website this week, and they did not have the Osprey in the color that I wanted. Um, so I put in a request for them to send me an email when they get that in stock, and I've decided to perhaps go with, um, just go ahead and cast on a cardigan so that at least that is started. And then when I get the yarn, I can knit the pullover and then I'll have a cardigan on the needles to finish after that. This is my, I don't know, this is my thinking. We'll see if it works out. That way most of the things that I plan to do do not work out in the way I plan to do them. So. We will see. Um, so now, now I'm trying to narrow down my cardigan pattern. I think I've narrowed it down to an Andy Satterland pattern, but I don't know which one. So when I go to House of Yarn um, this week to find the third color for the Stay Soft shawl, I think that I will look and just see if there's anything that pops out at me as far as yarn goes and whatever that turns out to be I will um, find a sweater to go with that yarn or I might find something online. There are a few indie dyers that I've been wanting to purchase yarn from um, and there are some 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 color ways of theirs that I would really love to have a cardigan in. Um, so yeah, we'll see. I will. I'll tell you about my progress next week. As for acquisitions, I don't really have anything to show you this week. I definitely didn't get any new yarn this week. Um, the only thing I did get is uh, I found on. Uh, Facebook Marketplace, which I am not usually on Facebook, which is why I never give my Facebook out um, at the beginning of the episodes. I just quite honestly can't stand Facebook. Um, I have to be on there sometimes for my job, of course, because I am in communications and uh, at a nonprofit, you kind of wear all of the hats. So it's my job to keep our Facebook and Instagram accounts going. So I am on Facebook almost, well, pretty much daily at work. Um, but I generally am not on there on my personal page. But I did see something pop up uh, on Facebook Marketplace this week, and I snagged it. Um, and that is a knitting basket. It's one of those old granny knitting baskets. I have all my knitting whatnots in there right now, but it's one of those that kind of um, folds up like that that you can carry around. And it just holds all of my projects that I have going um, so that they are not just sitting on the back of the sofa. <laughs> Because I think my husband doesn't really like that, although he doesn't tell me he doesn't like it. <laughs> but I think it drives him a little bit crazy. Um, so there, yeah, I have a, a little knitting basket. It's just a old vintage um, granny knitting basket that smells like cats. <laughs> I have almost no sense of smell, so I don't know what it smells like. But my cats are very interested in it, and they kind of go a little squirrely when it when they're around it. Um, so yeah, that's my only knitting acquisition this week. Um, so, because this is probably going to be such a short episode, I wanted to share with you some of my most loved or most used knits. Um, like I said last week, I don't have a whole lot of my own knitted objects that I have knit myself for myself. Um, I only have, you know, maybe 10 things total, or, or, you know, maybe a few more than that, but uh, I might be exaggerating, but I just have a, you know, not many, and I don't really use all of them, but I wanted to show you the ones that I have used the most. Um, 
and I really just have three. One of them has gone AWOL. I'm not sure where it is. It's in a bag or a, a drawer someplace. It's one that I have used a lot recently, so I'm sure it's just in a bag I've been carrying around and I can't find it right now. Um, so I'll start with um, the Cable Rimetry by Meg White. This is a free pattern on Ravelry. I knit this in 2009. It was my very first cable project and um, I have worn the hell out of this thing. Um, I don't know if you remember, but the calorimetry was very popular, I guess around the same time, like back in 2008, 2009. Um, and I did make one of those, but I don't know what happened to it. I don't have it anymore. I didn't wear it that much because it was made out of kind of a scratchy yarn. And so it always just like made my forehead itch so badly. Um, this, I'm going to put it on. It doesn't look great right now. I haven't been wearing it because it looks better if you can pull your hair back in a ponytail, which my hair just got long enough again to do. So I haven't been wearing this, but um, I'm going to put it on for you. So this is a kind of a hatlet. It's open at the back. It's kind of the precursor to the the ponytail bun hat, I think. Um, but I have worn this so much, especially when I had longer hair, I wore it a lot. Um, I, I wear it a lot when we're camping also. But um, it is just a really great little pattern. I've made some of these for gifts. It's really stood the test of time. It's made out of knit picks. Um, this is made out of knit picks wool of the Andes, and it's a it's a colorway they don't have anymore. It's um, this is was one of their kettle dyed colors, and I can't remember the name of the colorway, but I I love this color. Um, so yeah, there's not much just much more to say about it. It's um. It's just a great little hat and I've gotten so much use out of it. And I there are I got these cute cute little pin-up buttons. I don't know if you can see them. Anyway, I just love those little buttons. And yeah, it's been a great little great little hat. I've gotten so many compliments on it. Um my next most used item, knitted item, uh, okay, I'm going, to sh I'm going to show you these and I just want you to, don't judge me, don't judge me. These are so old, I probably knit these in 2009, 2010, something like that, and um, I watched these, or, or I knit these as I watched, um, the old uh, miniseries Bride's Head Revisited. <laughs> and it's the treads pattern. These are the treads by Victoria Ann Baker. You can see it has this sort of linen stitch kind of right in there. It's repeated down here. And um, I was still kind of a new knitter when I knit these, and I can see mistakes in there, but I just, I just love them. And they are definitely worse for the wear. I mean, that happened, I don't know when that happened, but um, <laughs> I should have fixed this already, and I just, I'm lazy. And, uh... Yeah, they're just kind of coming apart in a lot of places. <laughs> they're coming apart there too. The um, the thumb gussets have both been pulled by something or other, and I have the the yarn kind of tucked in here. You can see, <laughs> or I just kind of tucked it back in. They're just kind of a mess, but they are warm and cozy. These were knit, I think, out of Cascade 220. 
and I just absolutely love them. I'd actually like to knit myself another pair and I think these would make really good gifts too if I could ever get myself around to just knitting them. But anyway, yeah, they need to be gone over with a uh they need to be gone over with a gleaner for sure. Um but the the treads is a it's a really easy, simple, it's also a free pattern on Ravelry. It's simple. Um Yeah, I would highly recommend this pattern. I've gotten tons of use out of these. They're kind of cool looking and Yeah. I just love them. Uh, my next most used, uh, or here, I'll show you this one. My next most used knitted item actually is not knitted at all. It's crocheted. And that is this pin cushion <laughs> that I made out of, actually, I think I made it partially out of this yarn from the Bride's Head Treads, or the, it's the Treads pattern, and I call them my Bride's Head Treads because I was watching Bride's Head Revisited when I uh, knit them. But look at this cute, cute little crocheted tomato pin cushion. I use this a lot and I just absolutely love this guy. This is also a free pattern and it was by um, Kara Lyon. It's on Ravelry. And he... You can tell I, I knit it uh, out of two different, completely different colorways. But I kind of like him that way. And he turned out really nicely. So if you're in need of a new pin cushion, there you go. Is he focusing? There you go. So I think I solved, um, or I think I figured out, I haven't solved it yet, uh, but I think I figured out my focusing issue. I think I've been trying to hold things too close to the camera and it can't focus on, uh, on things. Um, so I am going to work on figuring out what that perfect distance is and, um, and uh, try to become more consistent at being able to get things in a good focus. And also... Here's my confession. I wear glasses. I actually, okay, so here's the thing. I wear glasses, or at least I should wear glasses, um, but I don't like my glasses, so I don't wear them, hardly ever, unless I'm driving. I wear my glasses while I'm driving and that's pretty much it. So usually, or, or if I'm um, in a public place that I don't know well, I'll wear my glasses. Um, but yeah, I'm really bad and I, I walk around my house, I do most, I do everything around my house without my glasses on and I do everything at work without my glasses on and even in public sometimes I don't have my glasses on. So if you ever see me in public and I don't say hi, and you know me and I know you and I don't say hi to you, it's because I probably can't see you. <laughs> it's because you're just a big blurry blob. Um, yeah, I got these glasses on glasses.com and glasses.com is fabulous. They they have amazing customer service. They really worked with me to get my lenses figured out because when I got these, um, I was having trouble with um, the, the the way they the. I was, the, the glass wasn't working for me and I couldn't figure out why, um, why I couldn't see well out of, out of the lenses and um, it was because the glass wasn't right and they worked with me to figure that out and then they upgraded to the better glass for free and they were just really great but because I was so focused on that I didn't realize that they weren't fitting me correctly um, in other places. 
Uh, so these these frames slip. They slip down uh, because they're too. I got. When, when you're ordering glasses online, you have to make sure you get the measurements correctly. So I was using an old pair of glasses to get the proper measurements for my face. You have to get, you know, the proper measurements here, um, from here to here, and, uh, and between the, you know, the nose. Um, and I got these measurements correct. In the front of the lenses and I didn't get these measurements correct but be and they're, they're just quite too long and they can't really be ad adjusted because of the way they're built um, so they don't really work for me which is why I don't wear them and that's just a long explanation and also I have to say I've um, I have historically worn plastic frames and these are metal frames and the um, my hair these little fine hairs on the side of my head get stuck uh, in the hinge all the time and it hurts like nobody's business. It hurts like things that I won't say on my podcast. Um, so yeah, that's another reason why I have trouble getting things in focus because I am out of focus. So. I guess the last thing that I have that I want that that I wear all the time that I want to show you one of my favorite things is the yellow brick cold cowl. This cowl is by um, Tracy Galloway. It's another free pattern on Ravelry, and it's a you know kind of an infinity scarf kind of cowl, very long, and. Um, I made this out of Malabrigo. I don't know the colorway. And it's this basket stitch, basket weave stitch for half of it, and then this kind of garter stitch for the other half. And I love this cowl. It always looks good. Um, it just goes on really nicely. It's easy to style and uh, it's very warm. That Malabrigo is nice and toasty and it's just really cute. I've gotten tons of use out of it and highly recommend it. It was a really fun knit with the basket weave and then um, just as you're getting really sick of doing the basket, basket weave stitch you then just get to knit in garter <laughs> for the rest of the way. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. And yeah, look at it. It looks great. It looks great. It just sits there. Um, so those are my favorite, or I guess not even my favorite uh, knits that I still have, but the, just the ones that I use the most out of anything else. Um, uh, I do have some favorite socks and I want to maybe go through my sock collection, my very minuscule sock collection on another episode. Um, yeah, I guess that's all I have this week. So it's a pretty short episode, uh, which is probably good because it has been um, just a disastrous time actually recording it this week for some reason. This has been quite the lackluster uh, the lackluster day today. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So I will sign off and say thank you so much for coming by and spending a little time with me today. Uh, I will try to be more timely about getting my episodes posted. Um, I've been very timely about recording, but the posting is just something different. And this is all a work in progress, so I know it will evolve as I go. Um, and I'm just going to put on all the knitwear sitting right next to me. It's just such a temptation. Isn't it sometimes just such a temptation to put all of the knitwear on? Oh, I feel like Dobby. So I will say
say goodbye and I will see you next week. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by and spending some time with me. Again, you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Flax Golden Knits. Don't be shy. Please um, drop me a note if you'd like to, if you have any questions or suggestions or anything like that. Um, and until next time, happy knitting and thank you. Goodbye. I don't know if you can hear him running up and down the hall. <laughs> Say hi, Moo. Say hi. Say hi. Say hello. <laughs> you want to stay? There he goes. OMG.